Mike and Heather Ludlam raised sheep near Hopkins. In 2012, Mike's adopted sister passed away from Huntington's disease. And Huntington's is a really devastating diagnosis. Um, it's a genetic disease, meaning one of Dory's parents must have had, her birth parents must have had Huntington's disease. And when you have Huntington's disease, there's a 50% chance each of your children could have Huntington's disease. It's a dominant genetic disease. And at this point, Dory had already had three children. Um, and Huntington's progresses, it kind of has a terrible progression. It starts off with mental illness. Uh, in our experience, it was like kind of a combination of Alzheimer's and schizophrenia. The very sad thing about Huntington's patients is they, they never completely lose their memory or awareness though. They always know they have Huntington's disease and they always know they're dying from it. And it's just tragic. Um, physical symptoms then start after the mental symptoms and it starts with difficulty moving. There's a Huntington's chorea you may have heard about where they jerk. They have spasmodic jerking motions that are uncontrollable. Um, that can be very painful. They have a hard time sleeping because of it. Um, but eventually they can no longer walk. They can no longer talk. Uh, they, and eventually they can't eat or swallow and most it's always terminal. Uh, most Huntington's patients pass away about 10 years from the time of diagnosis. It tears families up. It, 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 it's a terrible disease. It, 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 it just destroys families. It, it's just I don't, I don't know how other than say that but it it's very difficult. Um, emotions run high. When Mike read a one-paragraph information item in the American Sheep Industry online newsletter about sheep with a genetic disorder being able to help those with Huntington's disease, Heather did some research and contacted Dr. Larry Holler, a fellow veterinarian in South Dakota. And I basically found out that the Hollers have been raising these sheep for over 20 years. They were Dr. Larry Holler's PhD project when he was in veterinary school. And these sheep have a disease called GM1 gangliosidosis. And they produce an overabundance of GM1 gangliocide in their brains. We all have GM1 gangliocide in our brains. Um, all animals, all mammals have it. And it's, it's neuroprotective, it protects our brain. And interestingly, people with diseases like Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, they are deficient in, in GM1. That's not their main problem, but they don't have it in their in the levels a normal person does helping protect their brain cells. GM1 gangliosidosis, the disease in sheep, is a simple recessive genetic disease, meaning if you have a normal sheep and you have a ram that carries the gene, it, it has one copy of the gene, you breed it to a normal sheep, then 50% of the offspring will be carriers of the disease. They'll each have one gene. 50% of the offspring will be normal. Then if you breed two carriers together, 25% of the offspring are normal, 50% are carriers, but 25% will have this disease, and it's GM1 gangliosidosis, where they produce 40 times too much GM1 ganglius. Dr. Holler's research led to a Harvard researcher using ovine GM1 with mice affected by Huntington's. The mice regained normal motor function after a few injections of the substance collected from the lamb's brains. In January 2015, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration gave investigative approval to ovine GM1 to go through studies that are the first step towards clinical trials. Later in the year, the Ludlum started breeding lambs to be used as a source for ovine GM1. What they have kind of figured for amounts is one lamb that is affected with GM1 gangliosidosis can treat one patient for one year. So that's kind of the equation they've come up with. And so looking back at this population of 30,000 people with Huntington's disease, we are looking at to get those 25% carrier lambs, you'd need a flock of around 120,000 carrier ewes to produce those lambs every year. When they got involved in the Huntington's part of the project, they met all these families with Huntington's disease. And now they feel like, oh my gosh, we have to do this, you know. And Mike and I, we just looked at each other and said, we have to do this, you know. It's like, we have no choice. We have sheep 
And there's the, the beauty of it is, it's just conventional sheep farming. Um, the only thing I have to do different is when the lambs are born, I do a blood test. At the same time, I ear tag them, tail dock them, I take a blood sample, and we send it to the lab for genetic testing. You know, for the first time, I'm actually being able to do something. And I, I guess that's, that's the big feeling, is, is finally being able to actually do something um, rather than nothing. Because there is no treatment at this time for Huntington's, and this, this project really looks promising. For more information on how GM1 can potentially help those with Huntington's disease, visit glycosciencereserch.com.